The disaster of hypocrisy struck Harry and Meghan when the Sussexes squandered four days of luxury. They have been exposed and their choices after the Invictus Games raise many questions. Hello everyone. Welcome to the Royal Family News Channel. Even though Harry left his homeland for sunny California, he is 100% British. I mean, you can take the boy out of Britain, but you can't take Britain out of the boy. Harry may live in the United States now, but he certainly doesn't vacation like an American. Because after all, is there anything more British than spending a few days a year sunbathing somewhere in southern Europe? Ideally in a resort that offers excellent fish and chips. If we can't believe the new news, Harry and Meghan managed to sneak in a secret mega trip to a luxury resort in Portugal after spending a few days at the Invictus Games in Dusseldorf. And the optics of this little trip are less than stellar, as it now appears that Meghan went to Europe and spent almost as much time at the Invictus Games as she did on vacation in Portugal. This is what we learn from the Portuguese magazine Nova Gent, according to which the couple enjoyed a romantic and quick getaway to a trendy seaside town an hour and a half south of Lisbon. And this is where Princess Eugenie and her husband Jack Brooksbanks live. Meghan and Harry reportedly stayed at Costa Terra Golf and Ocean Club, where, guess who works in marketing and sales, none other than Jack Brooksbank. And at this point, I'm inclined to believe this news, because Meghan and Harry's visit has been confirmed by the local tourist office. When we think about what Meghan said in her speech at Invictus, the only question we can really ask right now is, what? Meghan arrived in Dusseldorf three days after the start of Harry's successful sporting event for wounded servicemen and veterans. But somehow, even though he couldn't make it to Invictus in time, he had more than enough time to spend a few days at a resort. Let's remember what Meghan said to the Invictus audience just hours after landing. She said, I'm sorry, I was a little late to the party. I just needed to spend a little more time at home settling our little ones in, grabbing milkshakes, and dropping off school. Apparently, Meghan Markle couldn't make it to Invictus on time because of their little ones in California. But he was able to stay in Europe a few days longer than necessary to tan in the sun well, the whole story is strange, but at the same time, I have to admit that taking this vacation might be the most perfectly real thing Meghan and Harry have done in I don't know how long. Let's look at William and Catherine for example. For more than a decade, they have been repeatedly criticized for their habit of taking vacations at the drop of a hat. Some criticized them for using any excuse to take a little vacation. As early as 2008, Her Secular Majesty was reportedly concerned that Catherine, William's then fiancé, seemed a little too eager to pack her bags and go on vacation. Even now that they are officially king and queen in waiting, they continue to take every opportunity that presents itself to go on vacation with their children. Every time these kids take a little break from school, they leave. Maybe they'll go skiing, maybe they'll go to the idyllic Isles of Scilly, but they'll go somewhere. But in reality, William and Catherine are housewives compared to Princesses Beatrice and Eugenie. In the span of 15 months from 2015, Beatrice managed to complete 18 international trips, while her little sister only managed 8. So obviously, the royal family loves to take vacations. Who doesn't? So Harry and Meghan, going on a great vacation, are respecting a family tradition. But at the same time, that doesn't mean that this trip to Portugal was a good idea. Now, Meghan and Harry have dedicated more days to their little break than they have appeared in public in the United States. S. For doing a good job. Optics matter here. After all, Meghan and Harry have spent the last few years trying to convince everyone that they are just as important as they were when they were representatives of the crown. Who can forget Harry University? No speeches. Who can forget her fake DIY royal tour of New York in 2021? Who could forget this sentence, the service is universal. And this year has been particularly bad for them on the good side. In 2023, 
Harry undertook two in-person charity outings in the United States. One of them was when he attended the Diana Awards Person Conversations for Change event with the honored alumni at L.A. And the other would be when he was visiting a youth group in Santa Barbara for Mental Health Awareness Month with Megan, and then he undertook one in the UK when he attended the Wellchild Awards. And then Megan has two charity outings under her belt this year. One on the occasion of International Women's Day to Collect at Home, an L.A. charity supporting pregnant women at risk of homelessness. And then the visit of the Sopra Youth Group. Meghan and Harry also appeared in a video announcing the first recipients of Responsible Technology Youth Power Fund funding in August. In September, Harry appeared at a philanthropic conference in Tokyo. And then he went to Singapore to play a polo match to raise money to support his charity Centivali. Meghan donated a recipe to a charity cookbook, Woohoo! And Harry made a video in their garden about Well Child. Archwell released a few snippets of things they supposedly did, but overall it's nothing impressive. According to Giving USA, $163 billion has been donated by private foundations in the United States. S. In 2022, Meghan and Harry's Archwell Foundation donated 4.6 million of the 20 raised from 2021 to 2022. The Sussexes may talk a lot when it comes to charity, but when you look at what they actually did, it's not quite as much. They act like they want everyone to take them seriously as global humanitarians, but so far they have failed to actually back that up with their work. Let's remember what Harry told the Tokyo audience last month. He said, My life is charity, it always has been and it always will be. But the thing is, they keep saying it but they don't really show that they believe it. So it seems that the true philanthropists of this world, like Bill and Melinda Gates and Greta Thunberg, don't have to worry about Meghan and Harry coming for their crown, or their high positions. I mean, everyone deserves to go, but spending almost as much time in the pool as at games isn't going to make them look good. All right guys, speaking of other news, let's talk about what you have to say after the video, Meghan's dilemma regarding the future. Her risky plan has disastrous consequences for her and Harry. Thanks for your input, and let's talk about some of your opinions. The first comment comes to us from Kat. Did I miss something? What has she been through that's not of her own making? If she decides to push the same old narrative in the book, she has all the time in the world to write, it will seal her demise for sure. If she has been advised not to do this, she will of course, Plow ahead, as she's incapable of listening to anyone other than herself. No one in their right mind would conclude the Invictus Games were a success, or that it had any real meaning for her whatsoever. Well, apart from giving her yet another platform for her latest non-fashion show and to reach the maximum audience she can at this juncture, she has diminished the value of the games, not enhanced it and I sincerely hope that someone is going to look into their financials and go over everything that are associated with, with a fine-tooth comb. I can't imagine this image of her marching in front of our British veterans, wearing what she wore with her sinister smile looking even worse. Now the bulimia of Princess Diana, who was a true imitator, is maturing. She is sick mentally, physically, inside and out. This is a huge stain on the history of the royal family, and will continue until the titles are removed and the divorce takes place. Either way, we know he won't go away quietly. At first, its removal from the real site must be crucial. It's amazing that she's still active and talking about what she's doing. The same goes for Harry. They're not splitting their time any more than I'm splitting mine right now, and I sincerely hope that plans are in place to do so without further delay. Thanks for your comment, Kat. I think most of us here completely agree with you, and we're equally frustrated. Something must be done for her, and quickly. She is a stain on the royal family, and will continue to make them look bad for as long as she is allowed to. The following comment is about Megan D'Souza's book, Memoir, a historical account, or biography written from personal knowledge. 
Will this include the past life, or will it be just another fierce testimony to its truth? Who knows if this will be included in the narrative section? It should be, because we know Megan is incapable of telling the truth. I mean, this woman really has a problem. She's a compulsive liar. And then Dizzy Chef, I don't see how Meg will be welcome at the Royal Family Center again. He hurts all the members of the Royal Family. And worse, it hurt the former Queen Elizabeth. Dizzy, I don't think she'll ever be allowed back. I don't think they will ever be able to forgive him. Even if they could forgive him or try to forgive him, they would never forget. And then Wayne says, let's face it, those two were nothing. He has nothing on the monarchy. She lacks compassion, honesty and sincerity towards the public. They did the damage. They both know that karma happens to them both. I agree with you, Wayne. I don't think they'll make it. I think karma happens. I know sometimes we get really frustrated just watching what these two are doing and it seems like they're getting away with it. But in the end, they will receive their punishment. I completely believe it. The next comment is about Meghan and the stolen jewelry. So CRM says, didn't the late queen have replica tiaras, necklaces, etc.? Because I didn't trust Markle. I know I heard about one of these shows that I watch. The Queen was a very intelligent woman. He identified Markle the moment he met her. Ooh, I hope that's true. Veronica responds by saying, Yes, the Queen had lines made that started immediately after she lent the tiara for the wedding. Meghan sounded the alarm when she asked for the most expensive tiara in the archives, the Russian one that Beatrice wore for her wedding. The queen may have been 90 years old, but she was very aware of what was happening. This is also what he saw when Meghan and Harry wanted to live in the queen's apartment. They said this would be the time they could take care of her, and the queen told him and them absolutely not. That's when Major Johnny, as he was then, ambushed Meghan and directed her to his office, offered her a cup of tea and wouldn't let her in with Harry. While Harry was with the queen, they then left by helicopter for the Invictus Games. I'm sure I saw it on the internet. I believe it, Veronica, and I really hope it's true. You're right. The Queen was a very, very, very intelligent woman. I'm sure he knew exactly what Meghan meant. And if I really think about it, you must be right. He would never let Meghan Markle get her hands on precious jewelry. All right, everyone. That's all the time we have for now, but thank you so much for watching and talking with us about everything. If you find my video useful, please like it and share it with your friends and family who might also like it. And don't hesitate to subscribe to the Royal Family News Channel for more updates in the future. Thank you very much for listening, see you soon and of course, I will come back to see you in the next videos.